Hey guys, my name is Yazzi. Um, this is my quarantine hair, and we are here together today to teach you, in a YouTube safe way, about the legend that is Metamorphosis, and what makes it stand out from your usual kind of brainless hentai story. So I will be covering the entire plot of the story, and I won't be commenting on the actual, like, porn aspect of it. There's no way to really make that YouTube safe, so we're gonna be saving that for a podcast with Jeff instead. Let's be honest, a lot of people can't handle how extreme metamorphosis gets. If you're squeamish or easily grossed out by various bodily fluids, uh, you're not gonna make it past even the early chapters, unfortunately. The tags listed by Faku the publisher include Hegao, anal, netorare, booty, busty, stockings, kogal, dark skin, cream pie, deep throat, pregnant, uncensored, Schoolgirl outfit, glasses, blowjob, hentai, x-ray, exhibitionalism, masturbation, impregnation, double penetration, condom, squirting, book, ugly bastard, bastard, original work, Shindo El Faku, English right to left, manga. And to be clear, I won't be showing that or talking about the kind of stuff here at all. I want to make it so those of you who can't read it at least get to know what the whole big deal is, as well as let those of you who have written it off as like just a meme get a taste of what you're actually missing. A lot of people don't realize that under all of these shocking and extreme tags sits a really heartbreaking, well-planned out story of a lonely girl and her very tragic circumstances. So let's start this one off clearing up one thing. This and this are surprisingly two completely different things. Turns out the hentai community is capable of two memes and two memes only. Metamorphosis, also known as Emergence, was originally released in separate single chapter parts over the course of three years. It wasn't Creator Shindo's first release, but something about Saki's story really stuck with people. Something. Slowly, Emergence became a huge meme in the anime community, known as the saddest or most messed up doujin that there is out there. So before we get into this, I actually want to leave this with a nice personal story about my experience with this book. After Faku published the physical book a few years ago, I, being the hentai collector, had to import it. I mean, I had to have a piece of hentai history in my hands. When my package arrived, I didn't think twice about the bright yellow inspected by customs tape on it. All Canadians at this point are used to waiting a few extra days for things to go through customs, and all the time they just kind of tear stuff apart for the heck of it. But on the elevator back up to our condo, I realized the envelope was a lot lighter than I expected. <laughs> I had already read the full digital release, so I knew it was over 200 pages, and on second thought, that did not feel like 200 pages. When I got back in, I cut open the package to find a slip of paper and nothing else. The paper was a <coughs> notice from Customs and Border Protection. <laughs> so the government took my hentai. I didn't take a full photo of the paper I received, unfortunately, only the cropped ones for Twitter, but as you can see, they were concerned about the <clears throat> subject matter. Canada's got some extremely vague definitions of obscene, as I learned that day. It's kind of crazy, but whatever. But the more important question on this paper is, is it hentai or is it treason? So I had kind of given up on ever seeing that one again, said a prayer to all of the future horny fans whose purchase would come to the same fate and moved on. And then, one faithful day, I received a letter from Customs clearing metamorphosis into the country. Okay, I guess. I'd like to take a moment to send a personal apology to whoever had to take the time to read it and make that decision. <clears throat> I'm sorry, or you're welcome? Who knows? The letter also said I had to come pick it up from CBSA in person, and uh, while we live kind of close to the border, that felt like it was definitely a trap. But hey, Metamorphosis was on the okay to import list suddenly. You're welcome, Canada. I ended up buying a copy in person to bring back with me instead since it was now allowed. And actually a few months later, I guess they got fed up with having such a cursed piece of literature in their possession because they mailed it back to me. So now I have two. Anyway, 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 getting to the actual story itself. <clears throat> Saki Yoshida is your average schoolgirl. She likes anime and light novels and eating omu rice, and she's really proud of her high score in her favorite arcade game. Her bio lists her dreams as none. She just wants to make friends. That's super cute and relatable, right? The splash with her bio lets you know the direction the story's gonna take right away, and it's not like Kogal transformations are new or crazy or anything, so what's so wild, right? The story starts off with Saki entering high school, reminiscing on her lack of social involvement. She was sometimes invited out, but she was far too self-conscious to ever go along with it. She reflects a bit on her disdain for cliques of energetic girls that actually stems from her own recognized self-hate. And so Saki decides she's gonna enter high school a new and improved, 
socially acceptable version of herself. She asks her mom for help with makeup and gets a trendy new haircut and ditches her glasses. Even her dad, who's usually cold to her, compliments her for a change and it means a lot to her. <laughs> As her high school life begins, she's still self-conscious on the inside, but she accepts an invite from her new classmates to hang out over the weekend. So exciting, right? Her dream is on her way. She, of course, needs some cute casual clothes for her first weekend outing, and while consulting a fashion magazine, she gets noticed by a cute older boy, and then, can you believe it, the cute older boy starts flirting with her, and he even asks her to go somewhere else to keep talking to a karaoke joint with a private room where, where he gives her alcohol. But hey, it tastes just like soda. If you haven't noticed by now, the train is already moving and it has no brakes. So hold on, we're only on page 12. Her self-confidence low and her social skills even lower, Saki goes along with what the cute boy wants and she gets her first kiss. Yes. And then directly after her first kiss, he brings out a little uh, something something. And uh, just like that, with that one pill, we have hit the hentai NOS button. Hold on tight, everybody. This has no brakes. I think we can all guess what happens with the uh, kind and charming older boy next. The drug kicks in and Saki, completely convinced that she's madly in love with him, gets left in the karaoke joint to deal with all of the consequences of everything alone, including some blackmail. Although Saki is just excited to have what she thinks is a cute, older and kind boyfriend. Anyway, we're only on page 30, let's keep going. Saki continues to meet up with and have sexual experiences with college age Hayato and continues to take the pills he's given her, which she is very clearly starting to build an addiction to. But hey, Saki's convinced she's having a great time. Her new school friends start talking about part-time jobs and they've convinced her to take on one that will pay her a whopping 30,000 yen in a single night. Wonder what that job could be. Saki sets up a date that night with a mystery ugly bastard and has a terrible time. But hey, she made some cash, right? If you haven't noticed yet, there's a lot of like, uh, but hey, at least Saki got this going on after everything. <laughs> after getting spotted outside of the hotel with that man, she gets blackmailed by male classmates into doing whatever they want, whenever they want, which her female mm, friends catch on to and start to push her away for. And then her dad also catches on. Y you know, th the one she was happy noticed her change in appearance. Saki continues to get used by both her dad and her male classmates for a period of time, and then things start to seriously go downhill. Word gets out more and more about Saki's dealings with the boys under the staircase, and the bullying begins. Distraught, Saki runs home in tears, only to be met by her mother, who, well, guess what she knows about? She refuses to listen and instead attacks and blames Saki for being such a disgrace to the family. Saki decides to run away and goes to the only person she can think of, Hayato, for comfort. You know, the older guy who uh, gives her drugs and blackmails her. Saki starts living with Hayato and clearly she starts spiraling harder and harder into her drug addiction. She stops going to school and instead proudly enters the world of adulthood. And she loves it. She looks down on the boring high school girls wasting their time and is proud of the life she's living. Hayato introduces her to his dealer and to yet another new drug. Also, uh, he's $8 million in debt to his dealer. So what could possibly go wrong, right? I told you guys, no breaks. Saki, of course, jumps to help her boyfriend. I mean, it's the least she could do after he has done so much to help her. Anyway, we can all guess how she has to pay for all of this. And so with a new drug, another stage of Saki's metamorphosis begins. Hayato convinces her to get some piercings and bleach her hair and get a bunch of tattoos, including one with his name on it. She continues to work in the only way she knows to pay off his debt. But one morning she wakes up to something, uh, real stressful. And I don't have any other kind of like, no breaks turbo overload joke for uh, how quickly this is going downhill, but um, hmm. she um, deals with the problem and has to get back to work. When she returns to the dealer to pay off more debt, she is introduced to yet another new drug. And while she's so high on the IV drugs that she doesn't know what's happening to her or care, she finds herself feeling calm and happy while picturing herself as her old self. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's really depressing already. So. Back to reality and an all new chapter, Saki is waking up a complete mess in back alleys. 
She's still desperately working for her lover, Hayato, while also getting robbed by her customers of all of her money and her drugs. Saki continues to spiral into heavier and heavier addiction, and she enters that endless cycle of getting paid in drugs instead of money. But then, what about her dear, poor, loving boyfriend's debt? Hayato literally throws her out on the street, and once again, she is lost, scared, and alone. So, we're about three quarters of the way through the story, so let's get a quick roundup of everything that has happened to our cute, socially awkward light novel fan, Saki. We went from learning to climb the social ladder, to uh, small experimental drug use, to blackmailed sexual favors from her classmates and her own father, to dropping out of school for more drugs and prostitution, to becoming a homeless heroin addict. Nice. Saki continues to put drug use above her own safety, and after getting used by a few homeless men, she finds out once again that she is pregnant. The homeless men she's with actually feel bad for her, and I think this might be the first time in the entire story that someone actually worries about her or recognizes her in a humane way at all. Despite her situation, Saki decides to keep the baby. She gets clean, although she is still homeless and dirty and starting to lose her teeth. But that doesn't mean she can stop doing the only form of available work for her. Drug addiction is a never-ending battle, and she gives in and begins using IV drugs again, even though she's pregnant. Her dealer cuts her off to end her suffering, but she will do anything to find a fix at this point. Despite all of this, she is still able to save up some money while she's still pregnant, determined to give the baby she has the life that she wanted. In the final chapter, she gets discovered by a group of high school kids, the ones she used to look down on. The kids accuse her of being a thief, and some very serious abuse happens, including straight up stomping on a pregnant Saki's stomach. They steal her money and leave her for dead, nobody wanting to look at the dying homeless drug addict, let alone help her. Saki cries in the mirror as she bleeds out, wearing her old glasses and braiding her hair to see her old self. The real her. She apologizes to her unborn baby that she worked so hard for, and injects herself with one last dose. As she's overdosing, the story ends on something kind of startling. Suddenly, we see an older Saki. She's clean of drugs and is looking literally physically clean. Her adorable daughter is there with her at the park, smiling. She reminisces on her past about when she used to hate herself. Her dear loving daughter says that she doesn't need to cry anymore, and Saki agrees, saying that with her daughter being born, she was reborn. And here's the last panel as she says that. This one gives some strong, strong sadness at the end. Somehow we went from horny to sad at like complete light speeds. As you can see, Metamorphosis is more than just a random shock value hentai. In his author comments, Shindo talks about how he decided that Saki would die at the end, because if you're gonna tell a story, you have to go all the way. By the time I was done going through the chapters at my snail-like pace, two of my editors had resigned, one of my assistants had given birth, and I ended up three years older. In all likelihood, Saki-chan herself had gone through three years of her life as well. I had her work really hard, too. It was a good run. In many ways, it was both a tragic and preachy story, but I wanted Metamorphosis to be about seeing the charm of a girl who was going through genuine misfortune. I'll be delighted if I can see you all for my next work. Next time, I expect the mood to be drastically different from this one, but I hope you'll pick it up all the same. Also, in the actual, like, final book release, Shindo included a bonus page that implies everything was faked for a movie and a photo shoot, and that Saki's actually an actress and none of it happened, but I don't know. I'll leave that being like a canon versus what if up to you. I think it's a fun what if to just kind of clear your mind based on those comments from Shindo, but it's up to you. Let me know. Metamorphosis is absolutely worth the read if you can handle it, and Shindo is both a talented storyteller and frankly a god of horny in between that all. <laughs> Saki's story had a lot of care and thought put into it, and I think the three years of work that Shindo put in really does show. Not that his other work lacks story or anything, but Metamorphosis is a legendary part of hentai history, and I think it has absolutely earned its spot there. So, you are now up to speed on what the memes themselves actually reference, and why people call it the most fucked up hentai ever. And now you have a clear idea of what exactly you're getting into. So, good luck. <laughs> you can pick up the entirety of Metamorphosis completely uncensored, like completely none of them pointless five pixel black bars, right now on Bookwalker, today's video sponsor, who has teamed up with Faku to provide digital versions of a few of their most popular uncensored releases, including How to Conquer Monster Girls, for those of you who want to explore some more <clears throat> broader, unique tastes. You can use code YAZI to get 600 yen off of your purchase, and until July 18th, get 20% of the coins back on your purchase. Please remember that obviously all of the Faku published works available on Bookwalker are 18 plus only. If you've read any other works by Shindo, or you have another recommendation for some kind of legendary story heavy hentai, leave it down in the comments below so we can either talk about it or judge you for being kinda weird.
Thank you for hanging around for this one. Uh, for those of you who came from Jeff's fill video, I will be releasing my rundown of the Promised Neverland manga as my next video, so please keep an eye out for that.